Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the housing market and as usual I'm going to be talking about the housing market uh, not specifically on any um, you know particular country or region but in such a way that regardless of what country, what city, what state, whatever um, that you live in, all of these principles will actually translate to where you are and you'll be able to see what's happening with the housing market, where it's been and where it's going. So the reason I think this video is timely at the moment is because um, as many of you know who've followed me a long time, I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring, I do coaching and everything else around, around these matters. And the last eight mentoring calls I've done in a row have all been around the housing market. Even on the coaching, the group coaching, everyone keeps asking about the housing market. And since it's been a long time since I talked about the housing market, I thought today would be a perfect opportunity to get you up to speed with what's happening. And yes, I know my voice is a little raspy today, but I've just done about six hours straight of mentoring calls. So excuse if my voice goes a little bit. So let's look at where we are today and how we got to this position. And this position is historically high house prices that are just exploding out of control and are unaffordable to most people. Now, one metric I've talked about a lot is the PE ratio on housing affordability. This stands for the price to earnings ratio. So in your country, one thing that would be very useful to look at is to look what is the average income in your country versus the average house price. And when you've got this ratio, you will then find out what the PE ratio is for your country. Really, really useful. So typically, historically, the average PE ratio on a house affordability was about four to one, one to four, however way you wanna talk about it. So let's say way back in the day, you were a grocery store manager and you earned $10,000 per year. Well, if you look at the house prices back then, it was probably about $40,000 for that house. And this will translate similar to other countries as well. But if you were to take that same job position today, let's say somewhere in Europe, in fact, it's more likely to cost somewhere like 350,000 euros. So you are way, way over the price to earnings historical ratio. And if we look at some places like Toronto, Canada, or you look at New Zealand, for example, you are way, way out of scope. You, you are 12 or 15, or some of them are 18 to one in terms of average income to the house price ratio. And of course, like everything, there's always a pro and con. So the people who own houses, maybe small landlords, mum and pop landlords, they would say this is a great thing. They're very happy because they are, you know, earning a lot of money from these house values. But then on the flip side, you have younger people today or families that are in renting accommodation who have always dreamed of buying their own home. And I think it's, it really is a great thing to own your own home. Renting is great. I'm currently renting at the moment, as many of you know. I've just moved to a, an island, a very small island, and I'm getting my foothold here, trying to figure out the place before I go ahead and purchase. So for many of you, I'm in a very similar position. And I'm gonna get on to when I'm looking to purchase in a moment, because I think it will uh, translate to many of you and help you with your decision. So the current house price explosion has taken many by surprise. Many experts were taken by surprise. A lot of data companies were taken by surprise. And that is because typically in a recession like we had in 2020 during the pandemic, house prices and asset prices will collapse. Uh, and that's pretty typical. That's normally what happens. Why didn't they this time around then? Well, that is quite complex. There was a lot of things that, that came into the picture. But one of them is the inflation that we're seeing right now, a lot, of, uh, a lot of increases across the board, it is from central bank currency printing. So many of you will know this already, but many people won't. Over the last couple of years, central banks around the world printed or created huge amounts of new currency. And uh, it's quite funny, a lot of people say, well, it didn't make it into the economy. Actually, a lot of that did make it into the economy because that is what inflation is. It is an inflation of the monetary or we could say the currency supply and that's why everything is going up in price because we have the same amount of goods and services well actually we have less now because of productivity going down but you have more currency chasing those things and this is definitely true as well in the housing market although there's one other thing that has helped to push the housing prices up and well actually two things if we link them together and one of them 
is the labor shortage with the material shortage to actually work on the housing. What has this created? It's created a massive shortfall in new building. So now we're seeing a lot more building permits come on. But we're also seeing extremely low, pretty much historically low inventory at the moment. So a lot of people keep asking, Neil, why aren't house prices crashing? I wanna buy a house. Uh, you mentioned before the last metric to ever go is affordability before a crash. So where is the crash? Where is the you know, affordability aspect? Well, actually we are reaching almost the tipping point now of affordability. So once people get to this tipping point, they will no longer, their monthly budget will no longer allow them to afford to buy the home that they would have bought one or two years ago. So we're very close to the tipping point now, especially with mortgage rates. And we'll talk about the USA here. Mortgage rates are going up and up and up very, very quickly, especially this month. Mortgage rates are about 5%. I mean, they're fluctuating, but let's just say they're about 5% at the moment. Whereas before you could get a fixed rate mortgage, 2.5%, 20, 30 years, no problem at all these deals just aren't available anymore. So this is going to crush affordability for a lot of families. Now, what is the other thing I always talk about? That is inventory levels. Right now, houses are simply not coming onto the market. Now, there's a lot of theories out there for this. I have my own theory. I personally think the reason that the inventory is not hitting the market is the same reason uh, of what happened in 2008, just before the 08 crisis. And what was that? Well, people saw, well, hold on, house prices are going up and up and up, sometimes more than I'm making in my job. Why would I sell this house? I'm just gonna keep it. And then families that are moving to new areas, what they would typically do is they would sell the house where they lived previously and buy a house somewhere new. That's not happening in a lot of cases. A lot of families as well are becoming first time landlords by keeping their old house when they move to their new house. So right now we have historically low inventory globally, pretty much right across the world because people simply don't wanna sell their house because they're making so much profit on the house. And another thing that's very unique to the last two years is this mass migration. And I'm talking about internal country uh, migration here, not external to internal. So what has been happening is that people that typically you know, worked out externally, they worked outside of the home, are starting to now work in the home. Some people have started homeschooling, some st people have started doing you know, other activities, so they need a larger home. Well, if you think about something else that's been going on, well, I've, and of course, uh, let me just wrap up on this, this is pushing house prices up as well. You'll see a mass migration from uh, a lot of blue states in the USA, for example, to red states. You'll see a migration from California and New York into Texas and Florida and the Midwest. And you know, so you've seen a lot of this, this is affecting house prices because when you go to the Midwest or these other states that I just mentioned, and you have now a lot more demand coming in, it's causing a supply squeeze. And this is why you're seeing such high prices being pushed up in certain states over others. The other thing that's going on right now is because, uh, as I just alluded to, a lot of people are working from home and a lot of jobs are going uh, remote. People are starting to buy larger homes. Now, here's something else that uh, you probably not thought of, uh, most people haven't talked about this, is this energy crisis I've been talking about for a long time now and, and, and forecasting. Well. Now think about people going from, uh, let's say a two bedroom home and they're, they're growing their family so they want a four bedroom home. You've now got to think about the heating or the cooling, the electricity on that home. Uh, where I live, I use uh, heating oil, which has just exploded upwards in price. So my heating bill will probably double this year. So this is another thing. This is going to squeeze affordability for a lot of families. But at the same time, affordability is one of these things that will pull the housing market down in terms of prices eventually combined with inventory. So once the inventory starts to hit the market, and it's interesting seeing this correlation between prices from a year, two years, three years ago, and the inventory levels, and now the inventory levels uh, as of today, the decrease is almost directly correlated with inventory with the price increases of homes. They're very, very close. So what do you think is gonna happen when all these home builders put all these new properties on the market? What's gonna happen when a lot of landlords or investment funds see the writing on the wall with the rising interest rates 
and they start dumping a lot of houses as well. You're going to see a lot more inventory hitting the market at the worst possible time. So all of these things will eventually pull down house prices. And once it starts to go, uh, it's going to go fast. Now, the other thing is pending home sales are down a lot. They're dropping dramatically, which is an indicator of a slowing housing market. ETF funds, so the home builders, some of these are down 25% year on year as well. Again, another indicator that we are getting close to, we're not past it yet, but we are getting close to tipping point on the housing market. Mortgage demand has also dropped as much as 50% in some Western nations. Again, this is another indicator of what happens once you get close to a housing market peak. So who is it that's buying all the houses and why is there no inventory? It's a lot of funds, it's a lot of people with cash, it's a lot of investors. So I said I would mention about my personal situation, how it can link to you. Well, I'm not buying at the moment because I'm really watching the market. You see, you've got a decision here and the decision is, do you buy now? Do you get it on a fixed rate term for as long as possible and get a low interest rate? but the house prices are at a peak, they're extremely high. Do you buy now and then just say, you know, whatever happens to prices, I don't care because I want the house more than the money. And besides, here's new, another thing people don't talk about. Let's say your mortgage rate's 4% and inflation's 8%. Well, you make a 4% profit just through inflation for as long as the inflation goes on. So, th so these are some reasons that you may want to buy now, but there's also flip side. And that is if you're a cash buyer, right? And, and, you, and you, you know, you want the best deal possible. Or if you're like me, where I'm probably going to be part cash buyer, part mortgage, I'm going to wait and just see what happens. Yes, mortgage rates are going to go up. I've got, you know, no doubt in my mind about that. And they're going to continue to go up again, pulling the housing market down with inventory once that flips. But for me personally, I think I'd rather pay less for a house, even with a higher mortgage rate later on. Again, there is no right or wrong answer here. It's personal preference. You need to make that decision for yourself. So if you'd like to know if your housing market is just going to keep exploding upwards this year or if it's going to crash, just start looking into some of the data points that I've talked about. Start correlating this to what happened during the last crisis. See what happened. You know, you've got to start tracking all these things together. If this is a little bit too complicated, you, you know, you don't want to. This is obviously a big financial decision. You'd like my help with it. I can't give you financial advice, but I can talk you through what I would do in your situation. And I can look at the, you know, all of the details. I can, we can run some analysis. I pay for all uh, this software so I can look at different areas, different uh, cities and different um, regions, especially in the USA. Uh, more than happy to help you with it. Other than that, just remember, I do have a private community. We do have a housing market. Uh, real estate investment sector in there with a couple of housing market experts and brokers. But apart from that, thanks so much for watching today and being a subscriber here. I really appreciate you. Uh, take care, God bless, and I'll see you next time.